Welcome back to the largest map that has ever been made in the history of RTS games. It is Terminus RE. And we have on the left position, Hasuabs himself. And just as you said in that very fashionable velvety red. And in the right position, we have Mouse Sports Morrow, the infested Terran, spawning as the blue Zerg in the right position. Um, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that fast hive tech that we were finishing up with before the match started, Weep, that... The real important note is that Zergs always need to be putting some kind of pressure on the Protoss. Speed Zergling counterattacks, drops, Mutalisks, Nidus networks, um, anything of the, this sort. And I really think that with the Roach Hydra mix, you can pull it off as long as you get those Broodlords fast enough. Because in a sense, Broodlords are a form of very, very aggressive pressure. You know, the, the Zerglings and the Mutas are very roundabout and very harassy, but the Broodlords are the first really big unit that lets Zerg break down the front door, with perhaps the exception of a ridiculous amount of roaches. So getting those Broodlords fast is essential for putting pressure on. Otherwise, if you're stuck with roaches and hydras, you are limited to wherever there's creep. And the instant you step off that, you're in danger. And when your opponent is actively going out and really doing a good job killing those tumors, because one of the things that Morrow is uh, fairly decent at is getting that creep spread out there so he can do exactly what you're saying. But the moment it, the, that creep is gone, it completely negates the positive effects there. And then suddenly you have an army that cannot do that harassment like you're talking about. So we're going to see the initial scouts starting up here on Terminus RE. We've got the pool going down. Gas is already up. And I expect to see Morrow start off exactly the same way as he did. Get that 100 gas. Go ahead, drop speed, and then get those drones uh, back on the mineral line. Meanwhile, we've got a forge first opening for Hasuobs going to take that expansion likely and uh, have all the time in the world because they are at cross position so this is going to uh, turn out to be a pretty interesting game I, I like it when Protoss opens like this I think it just always will make for a more dynamic game I'm a little disappointed with Morrow again. I mean, on this huge map where it's so easy to secure lots of bases, just going for the same old gas pool, and there's the Zergling speed likely going to get started. There's the Queen and the two sets of Zerglings now that the Queen is out. And, I mean, Hazelox is going to have a very easy time just, you know, comfortably walling off his front. I don't think he should have built the Photon Cannon first. I think he should have absolutely built that first gateway and then thrown down the cannon because if for some reason there's a bunch of Zerglings coming, then you just wall off with a second gateway until you're uh, waiting for your cannon to finish. Yeah, and that's uh, such a great thing to do. It's like every Zerg's, oh, I got it. Here's the opening, and then boom, denial right there. Uh, so we are going to have the hatch yeah. going down. Lings are out. Chase away the probe, and uh, we are going to have the far hatch uh, be going down first. So, I mean, keep in mind, like, in a situation like you mentioned, he could have easily gone even... I, I mean, I'm not sure about the Proton, but if he would have gone hatch first, he would be well ahead of the Protoss here. But now we're going to see this Nexus finish, and uh, that is certainly will be a one-up for Hasuobs. That gateway is down. Are those initial lings going to go out and try to do any damage at all? It doesn't look like it. Just take those towers. Uh, we did have... I thought there was four out, but I can only uh, apparently find two right now. So speed oh, is going to finish. Oh, looks like he's in the top right with him trying to scout around all fringes of his base, oh, there make sure there's no proxy pylons, and you know, that is another great advantage of getting that very fast Zergling with Zergling speed, is that you can pretty easily knock down any proxy fill-in-the-blank, really, proxy stargates, proxy uh, gateways hiding on the map, even if someone got creative and built a proxy robo, you could easily spot that one. Um, so, Morrow's just making sure that he's going to be responsible about that, and there he catches a probe that's way down at the south end of the map. Yeah, I think that's huge victory right there. I mean, you're like, it was just a probe, but, you know, honestly, aside from the act that happened to remake it, that could have been a probe that was going out there. Put that early proxy pile on down, doing some shenanigans. It also could have just been scouting, but that's exactly why two Zerglings that cost absolutely nothing doing a scout like that is really good. And it allows Mara to continue to drone up. Now, one thing I see over on the production tab, we do have a Stargate coming out here, uh, but there's still this drone inside his base that is only patrolling on the inside. So right now, there's actually oh, no, no knowledge of the Stargate. Wow, that's going to be painful, Marcus. That is going to just ruin his day. And oh, wait, wait, never mind. Forget anything I was talking about the day. Look at this. He's getting ventral sacks. That was an extreme 
extremely fast layer. I was busy just assuming Morrow was going to be his same old self, but there he is with a little bit of the switch up. We see that Void Ray getting chrono boosted, and if I'm Morrow, I'm probably going to be feeling at least a touch suspicious, thinking, man, there's really just nothing at all in this base. I haven't yeah, seen I a unit come up and try to kill me. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is kind of funny. I mean, just patrolling around this one area, he has free access to all this information down here. And, uh, you know, think about how crucial it would be to know if that Void Ray was coming. I think finally Hasuab realizes, oh, crap, this uh, drone is just having vacation. So he brings a stalker up here. Uh -oh, oh, Will, uh -oh. oh, my gosh. He actually ended oh! up giving it away. He sees the Void Ray. He sees the Stargate. Maybe he should have just let the drone live. And it looks like Morrow, though, is in a somewhat awkward spot. He wants to get another queen out, but he cannot rush for a queen right now. He's got to wait for Ventral Sacks and Speed Overlord to finish. We see a Baneling Nest done. We see a bunch of Speed Zerglings rolling on in. Oh, this is going to be a really exciting match very soon here. Once those Overlords do get cross map, we see one Overlord making its way on over. Zerglings continuing to stockpile themselves in the middle. And if you're Hasuab, you're going to be wondering why everything's rallied. And there you're going to find it. A pack of Banelings morphing by the second natural expansion. You see that one Void Ray trying to pull on back, do a little He's... bit of damage. He's screwed though. I mean, like, the Banelings are coming in, but the moment the Overlords come in, don't they just target that? I mean, isn't this going to be rough for Morrow? Well, it looks like he's just going for it. He doesn't even care. Look at him loading right on up. Yeah, sure. Look all and you he's want. Shooting and the, the one on. Overlord that's empty. The only one that has nothing in it. And he doesn't even have time to take it down. Morrow showing that this is a forced break-in. Nothing could have been done to stop that. And oh, there's the Overlord. He's got to unload those Banelings quickly. So that way he will not end up losing that. And there's the force field on the ramp. Looks like no Bayman's gonna make it down the ramp today, but immediately Morrow makes it a two base versus one base situation. Oh, it was sad to see those Banelings go. It was a good force field there on the front. He'll pull all of his units back. Uh, this Void Ray is going to do a lot of damage here, but everything in the main, minus a pylon, uh, is gone. Oh, and there is a robotics facility down here. Will he actually go after that? Looks like he's going to bring even more Zerglings over. No, he only gets a few out before it does go down. He sees the robotics bay right there. Going to go after a few units here. Will the force fields go down? Yes. But uh, he will uh, not get much of anything, and that attack did do a lot of damage, but uh, not quite able to sort of finish the deal here. And amazingly enough, even though he took out that Nexus, put his opponent back on one base with the second one going, having everything in that natural choke pretty much saved the Protoss right there. Yeah, I mean, you always want to have that huge wall in at the front, but as it turns out, oh, I actually get to keep these when I lose everything? Oh, what a great going away present. And, but it looks like Morrow, on top of his game, look at this expansion at the bottom right. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You have to put pressure on Protoss, and just look, uh, right out the gate pressure for Morrow puts Hasuabs in a cripplingly tough situation. Yeah, we've got these links. They are going to go forward. Could cause a cancel here. Oh my gosh, he's going right for the probe line. He knows that all the probes are sitting in that mineral line. He's going to back off. He actually does not kill anything. And with enough units, I don't think these Zerglings are going to do much of anything. They a uh, little indecisive there. Meanwhile, the Void Rays are moving around into position. There is a sport a Crawler there. We do have a Queen as well, but three Voids and a Phoenix. This is going to be really nasty. There are some uh, Hydralis out, but does he have the numbers to be able to take care of this? Let's find out. And it looks like they're trying to swing on in. We saw the two Banelings from Mara were in the bottom left of Hasuab's base, but didn't manage to do much. And it looks like the Hydralis aren't going to pick off a Void Ray, but they are going to be able to repel this attack. And if we go to that unit counting station, 41 drones to 31 probes. Not a huge differential. And now that Hasuab's kind of has a third or a second base up right now. He's going to begin to start getting back on his feet, but we're going to see a lesser version of what Hasuabs wants to do. He only has six mineral patches and one rich geyser, as opposed to eight mineral patches and two normal geysers. So he'll be able to produce some of that ground plus Colossus army. Now, let me uh, let me ask uh, about the situation I kind of see as he's in. So the Protoss has this air army out right now, obviously a Zerg counter with these Hydras, but it's going to be really hard to march these Hydras across this field and get the job done, right? So the Protoss responds. He's like, okay, it's risky because one of my bases is down, but I'm going to go with the Robotics Bay. I've got my second base up with one gas. Um, how do you feel about this? Uh, I mean, from the Protoss perspective, and then what does a Zerg need to do? Here he 
is moving forward, trying to advance that creep as much as possible, but... Looks like he's continuing. They're going to have to be a little bit careful with that queen, but you know what? I really like what Hasuobs is doing. He is double expanding very quickly uh, after losing that main. Do you see the... Oh, losing a Void Ray in the middle of the map. The Hydros advancing a little bit too far. And I think this this play, a, a little bit of risk taking these two expansions when he doesn't quite have enough units to defend all of it if dropping crazy action does begin from Mara. But still, it's the only thing that will allow him to pop back ahead. As we can see, Hasselops is already ahead of Mara in terms of the expanding game if he can get up his main once again. So we're seeing that Mara looks like he's going to be going for another drop. This is exactly what he needs oh. to do. And there is a Colossus out. John, he's going to move it up. He's going to oh. drop one of the Hydralis down on the floor. And now this army is going to retreat, taking damage a long way. But it will go back to the cannon line. That will do some additional damage. Force field on the ramp. And the drop is stopped short. He might be able to take out that Nexus in there. Nothing is mining. But instead goes after the robotics facility. And that was a big win there for Zerg. And now Mar trying to swing on in with all his Hydras in length. And it looks like does manage to pick off. One of those Void Rays is going to begin pulling back against them. Those Void Rays begin to get close to the one or zero count. That means that there's going to be no more harassment for Zerg. He can just bounce up to maximum dropping. And there's a nice warp in by Hasuwab. He is swinging in from all sides. He does the target fire. That looks like the next one's down to 100 hit points. And no, he will be repelled. Very thin defense right there by Hasuwab. And amazingly enough, we see that Hasuwab is actually ahead in the food count. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know that, that I think that was a good attack by the uh, by the Zerg, but the Prodos responded perfectly using the natural once again is a great defensive position coming down using the force fields on the ramp. He had the photon cannons as well. Void Ray now chasing away even more overlords, and you can see that the overall food now 94 for Morrow. And one thing about doing those drops when you have those Void Rays there is that, you know, you're likely going to lose some Overlords in the process. So he's going to have to be rebuilding that. We've got uh, Corruptors out now. Uh, plus one Air Weapons, Tunneling Claws, and Burrow are going to be added as well. And then two hatcheries going up for Morrow. We've got uh, one at a base, and then I believe we have a Macro Hatch going down at the, uh, at the main base as well so um you know this game is still gonna keep going on it's a back and forth battle but hasuabs really handled a lot of this pressure very nicely and at this point in time you always have to remember speed overlords means oh and look at this corruptor's easily taking off that one nice. void ray you gotta remember that speed overlords mean that your hydralis suddenly can become aggressive units not right. just with the drop but at the front of the base you can just do a creep highway to the front run up with your hydras and you know what if there's too many colossi there or too many units you just pull right on back with your giant spread of creep we aren't seeing maru do that and all those buildings at the front the core the gate and that researching forge are big vulnerabilities every time we've seen um, Zerg begin to step up into the aggressive seat. That's really when Protoss begins to falter a little bit. But it's so easy when you're in Mara's position to think, yeah, you know what? I did my damage. All right, I got the bases I want up. I'm in good shape. But you're against a Protoss on three bases, getting the chance to build up an army of death. We're already seeing more gateways and cannons get added by Hasuobs in the main. So you and, have uh, to be we're very, very careful. Yeah, they, and it's it's needed because those drops are still a threat. Now, I like this, and I, I feel like more Zergs are doing it, doing, like, scouting with these Corruptors. As long as you stay out of danger, sometimes you can't even catch uh, a Colossus off, uh, off track here. He is going to take out a Phoenix here, and those Colossus are quickly going to move back as well. A lot of creep being spread over here on the north side of his opponent's base as well. And... I got to almost question here at this point, like, who knows if the game will go that long, but how does Protoss take a fourth here and defend it quite well? I mean, even the, the closest one to his base seems so far away in terms of what is at the natural. I think that's one thing that's certainly going through Hasuab's head right now. And Hasuab, I think, is doing the exact move he needs to do, which is to get lots of gateways. We see four gateways at his choke, we see four more gateways at the south of his main. We see five gateways at the north side of his main. He's going to use all of those to begin producing a ridiculous amount of gateway units and begin extending out into the center of the map. And it looks like there's the Roche Hydra push to the front. This is exactly the sort of vulnerability that Marl could have abused earlier on. I mean, really, what can Hasuobs do about this? 
Yeah, well, uh, he's going to see his Forge fall that was getting plus two weapons. We will have a Immortal move for it. Oh, he's going to lose his Psychor as well. Uh, that's going to be at the front, get killed down, and he's not going to give up these Corruptors. Yes, he's going to go ahead and commit to this battle. We do have these Immortals up front. He cannot take down a Colossus, and he will be chased away. I thought that, you know, I, I don't know, he went back and committed to the battle. Should he have backed up? I think the answer is yes, but at least he reaches the creep and moves back. But the Protoss could move forward. It looks like that is what he's going to do today. Not a huge uh, Colossus count, not a huge Immortal count, but the Stalkers are just swelling rapidly with the amount of gateways that are out. 40 Stalkers on the field right now for Hasuobs. That alone is going to be tough for to deal with, but include just a handful, just a sprinkling, a smattering of those robotics facility units. The Zerg is in a whole world of trouble. We see a Dark Shrine getting added. We see more gateways from Hasuobs in the back, and there is the final huge confrontation. Will it be enough? We see more Zerg units swarming, and there's the blink back, and it looks like the Colossi will finally fall for Morrow, just not have as many Zerg units, and look at Hasuab just bringing in more and more Stalkers. The Stalker count is still at 31, but it looks like Hasuab's going to retreat from that battle. A little bit surprised oh, yeah. by that. Oh yeah, and he's got 23 Hydralis incoming right there, so I think he takes out some of the bigger threats. So we're going to have the uh, Stalkers blink forward in a very aggressive move, and in just a moment, a ton of Hydras are going to meet up. These Hydras are currently 2-1, five more on the way, and they will actually decimate this little ball of Stalkers, so he will move back, especially when used in conjunction with the Corruptors. There are no uh, Colossus, so you have to use the uh, Corruption ability on these units, and he's really flirting with disaster here. And there he is, moving in with the Corruptors. It looks like there's a target fire by Hasbro. He's trying to pick off as many Corruptors as he can, and he gets every single one of them. But Morrow's Hydralis count is enormous. 34 Hydras to 24 Stalkers. I am just so impressed at Morrow's ability to replenish such a big army so quickly. Three more Corruptors coming out. A couple of Roaches en route as well. Roaches is one of those key units you need to be able to deal with any number of Colossus or even Zealots if they end up popping in there. Hasuob well, looks like he is now taking that left expansion. But here comes Morrow, not attacking at the best angle. A lot of Stalkers in that mix. And that one Colossus at the back dealing some huge needed damage. But it looks like it's not enough. He ends up no. moving back for a temporary retreat. No, I mean, it, it, uh, the one Colossus, the one Colossus basically disintegrated that army. We're going to have a Corruptor out there just donated two Hasuobs, and now the Zerg's got to be careful. Looks like he's got a lot of Overlords here. Could decide to go for some sort of a drop as well. Protoss moving forward, though. Not sure if this was a mistake. A lot of Stalkers going to fall right here. Try to blink away once they have it. There it is. Going to bait him back in the army. And you'll notice just the map control here that uh, we see out of Morrow right now. Both players about maxed. We're going to see Hasuobs just reach it. And Morrow continues to move forward despite the fact that I'm not sure he has the unit uh, capability to win this battle but he's moving forward 16 roaches just fresh popped out onto the field and the hydras and roaches are continuing to advance forward morrow being so aggressive with this composition pushing everything back doesn't wow. even matter if he can kill the army he is in the way of the probes beating off all the probes he is getting loaded up into the overlords heading up to the high ground to say hello to those colossi who are on vacation in the main and now the zerg units oh. getting isolated and picked off and he does get a colossus and more units being dropped from all angles morrow is so aggressive with these slow mud units, the roaches, the hydras. He's taking out the fourth base. He is pulling back with everything. Oh. He's losing the overlords with those units in there, but he doesn't care. Look at the rally point. We Look at all those roaches that just popped up. 17 fresh, juicy roaches and more buddies to join in. Corruptors coming in as well. Phenomenal, phenomenal aggression by Maru. Yes, it is. But, again, suffering that Tier 2-itis right there as we don't have a Greater Spire coming. The Hive is up, and I do like the fact, obviously, the Hive will take him to plus 3 attack here for uh, these ground units, which will do a lot. Now, more Corruptors coming out. Uh, that's certainly been one of the problems is that he just, frankly, hasn't had enough Corruptors. But now we do have, you know, a few more Colossus out. Um, but the army is not nearly as big uh, as it was before. And, again, 
Can't stress, this fourth base has to go up for Hasuab, so he's going to have to sit right here and defend it. The Zerg has to know that because look at the Overlord and Creep Vision that Maro has right now. He knows that he's got uh, the Protoss in a situation where there is not much left mineral-wise inside that base, so he is Ooh. going to have to mine from here. And the Dark Templar from Hasuab gets 11 kills at the natural expansion. Oh, nice. In the center of the map, Hasuab's now swinging up to that north main. He saw that there were a couple drones being transferred. Those drones, those traitors let him right to his homelands and you know what morrow is not making the same mistake that he made last time when he was in tier two itis that is that he is being aggressive if yes. you let the protoss player get max you are done for max protoss is much stronger than a max roach hydra army and there we see the dark templar at the top master gt getting himself 17 kills 18 and does manage to get poked to death and here comes morrow with the huge push protoss only at 134 food zerg is max this is the exact engagement that you want to set yourself up into the corruptors are leading the charge they're going to advance they're going to corrupt both of those colossi one of them falls almost immediately the second one takes damage and their force was going down but not nearly enough the huge surround from morrow the space on this map allowed for those roaches to move so freely the blink trying to retreat all the zerg units hitting those vulnerable probes at the second base and hasuab who ended up winning game one is up against the wall in game two way too many roaches trying to blink around and there is the good game morrow wow. tying it up and we the exact mistakes that we talked about in game one looked like a completely different morrow in game two the drop play at the start immediately putting the pressure on hasuobs and then leading right into his usual roach hydra game we were getting a little nervous was he going to get passive absolutely not began attacking poking at the front retreating doing more drops at the back and then finishing things up with the huge surround incredibly solid play by Maro. He never let Hasuavs get close to maxed. And, and you know, a really key point on the final battle. Once the Colossus went down and he knew going in, okay, two Colossus, these units can just go forward. I'll get the corruption off. I'll take these down quickly. At that point, Hasuab's only hope was those force fields. And as you mentioned, that middle area uh, where that fourth was that he was trying to take so open that, uh, you know, Morrow did a phenomenal job just moving his roaches down. All of the observer, or excuse me, all of the sentries were right there for uh, the roaches to consume. They went down so quickly and after that, you know, the Hydras, and they were they were about to hit plus three, so you can only imagine how that battle would have went if Morrow would have had plus three, but uh, I think you're absolutely right. Um, complete 180 there from Morrow, and uh, you know, the Ventral Sacks early on, such a cool little play, and he read it nicely, uh, despite the fact that all those Void Rays were coming at him too, um, so you know, a lot going on in that game. I can't believe, like, I think I saw 29 minutes on the clock. So what a game. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to be moving on to game three. Each player picking up a game. And, you know, I've got to note, though, that Hasuobs really deserves some sort of, I don't know, Boy Scout badge for, you know, hero hold mode. Very boxer-esque of him. He was virtually dead. He was down to yeah. a base and shambles and forced it back to a 29 minute game where he almost almost won now the one issue to note from morrow's side is that we saw that drop play at the start we saw you know another drop in the middle but for the most part i don't feel like morrow used that drop as a tool that was at his disposal it was more of here's the play that involves drop did it do damage good i'm going back to roach hydra again i would have liked <laughs> a little bit more seamlessness to it because you see um you know a player like moon who just seems to always have an overlord with four hydras in it and he'll just drop it at the expansion in the middle of a battle begin picking away at probes from a distance and it can really end up turning the tide of battle and controlling the protoss armies it may have been an active choice by morrow to not go for it because as we saw the engagements in the center were just so, so well executed and so well flanked by Morrow. But still, I'd love to see a little bit more drop-in type action because on the next map, it's Crossfire and Protosses love this map due to how tight the spaces are, to how well the Colossi and Force Fields and Blink Stalkers work in those spaces. Even things like Void Rays and Phoenixes maneuver well with those spaces. And the usual Roach Hydra mix just doesn't cut it. So maybe Infestors, maybe we'll see a little bit of the fungal growth in.
Yeah, I, I love uh, the Infestors post-recent patch. So uh, game three, anyone, both players tied up here. One game apiece. Mouse Hasu, I was taking on Mouse Morrow, Day 9. Are you ready? I am ready to rock, ladies and gents. I am Day 9. That beautiful man's voice that you hear is DJ Wheat. And we are about to go into game three of the second round of 16 match here at the PokerStrategy.com Team Liquid Star League. Let's roll.